All right. Good afternoon, and apologies for the delay. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be worth waiting for, but here we go. <laughs> Uh, now, we're waiting for a statement on North Korea, and it's, I still don't have it, so. Um, start off, though, with a humanitarian update on Ukraine. Denise Brown, uh, who is the humanitarian coordinator and, uh, in Ukraine, visited uh, the front line city of uh, Mykolaiv in the south of the country today. Uh, Ms. Brown met with people whose lives have been devastated by the Russian invasion and with aid organizations working to support them. She was accompanied by representatives of a number of UN agencies who are working on the ground on the humanitarian response. She also met with local and regional authorities and uh, was able to monitor the arrival of the first batch of an additional 28 truckloads of aid supplies provided by the UN. Her visits comes as people in Mykolaiv face a serious humanitarian crisis. The war has destroyed water networks, leaving some 250,000 people who remained in the city which is, that's about half of its pre-war population, and those people have been struggling every day to access safe drinking water, among other struggles. And also on the overall humanitarian response, we, along with our partners, have provided critical support to more than half a million since the people since the start of this phase of the war. The Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed arrived in Nairobi, in Kenya, this afternoon after attending the pre-COP meeting that took place in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and she represented the Secretary General there. Tomorrow, she's scheduled to meet with the newly elected Kenyan President, Dr. William Ruto. She will also attend a roundtable with Kenyan County Governors to discuss climate action. And then on the 6th of October, she will travel to uh, Kajiado, a county heavily impacted by the ongoing drought in Kenya, where she will visit a vaccination and livestock feed distribution site and a hospital. Uh, and as mentioned, she will then fly out to Cape Town, where, she, where on Friday she will deliver the uh, Desmond Tutu lecture. Uh, back here, uh, Janine hennis plaskert the special representative for Iraq, um, brief the Security Council. She noted that although calls for Iraq's leaders to overcome the differences and form a govern government have abounded since the election were held a year ago, discord and power plays have prevailed over a sense of common duty. The situation remains highly volatile, she said, describing the events over the past few days, or the past days. The special representatives um, emphasized the UN's intense engagement during the past month and weeks from participating in dialogues and holding countless bilateral meetings to drafting roadmaps and conducting shuttle diplomacy in various forms. Believe me, she said, we tried nonstop. The special representative added, it is high time for Iraq's leaders, all of them, to engage in dialogue collectively, define core Iraqi needs, and pull the country back from the edge. Um, turning to Somalia, you saw that yesterday afternoon, after the briefing, we issued a statement in which the Secretary General condemned yesterday's attacks in Belitwene, in Hirshabele, uh, perpetrated by al-Shabaab. The attacks resulted in many casualties, including state officials. The, the Secretary General extends his condolences to the families of the bereaved, as well as to the government and people of Somalia. He reaffirmed the commitment of the United Nations to work with regional and other act international actors in supporting the people and government of Somalia on their path towards building a peaceful country. Uh, um, we unfortunately have some sad news from our peacekeeping colleagues in the Central African Republic. Uh, the mission tells us that three peacekeepers from Bangladesh have died after suffering severe injuries when their vehicles hit an explosive ordnance device overnight. A fourth peacekeeper was seriously injured and is currently fa uh, receiving medical treatment in Buare, where uh, the wounded had been evacuated. The incident happened when the troops were on patrol in the Kui Bohong axis, about five kilometers from the mission's temporary base in the Wampende prefecture. Uh, the Secretary General conveys his deepest condolences to the families of the peacekeepers and the people and government of Bangladesh, and we wish, of course, the wounded peacekeeper a speedy and full recovery. I do expect a more formal statement from the Secretary General to come down soon. And uh, a humanitarian update from Ethiopia, where humanitarian colleagues are telling us that a staff rotation movement out of Tigray have resumed. Personnel were moved today safely by road, uh, by road via Afar. 
others uh, we hope will be moved soon. The movement had been put on hold since August 24th. We welcome this development, but we also call for the resumption flow of life-saving uh, supplies uh, that can be delivered through the humanity and um, by road, and of course, the resumption of the humanitarian air service flights. Those flights have remained suspended since the 25th of August, halting the transportation of supplies and operational cash into the region, which is vital for our operations. Meanwhile, the situation in the northern part of the country remains fluid, continuing to endanger and displace people. It is estimated that the fighting has displaced hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children in parts of Tigray, a far and Amhara region and is impacting the lives and livelihoods of millions living in conflict-affected areas. Our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that a large part of Tigray region and several areas in Amhara and Afar are still inaccessible due to reported ongoing fighting, which is hindering humanitarian access to people in need, including thousands of displaced people. Despite uh, security concerns, uh, access <laughs> restrictions, and lack of resources, our partners continue to respond in areas they can access in the three regions. In Tigray, the remaining humanitarian stocks continue to be distributed and basic services provided despite uh, the very difficult operational challenges. As of the 26th of September, 32 mobile health and nutrition clinics were operating in 58 facilities and displacement sites in the region. Several essential supplies, including tents, sleeping mats, malaria kits, and jerry cans have been distributed in the north and western zone in Tigray. In Amhara and Afar, newly displaced people are being assisted with food, water, emergency shelter, and other supplies, as well as health uh, services. Quick update from this hemisphere and from Cuba, where the UN team led by the resident coordinator, Consuelo Vidal Bruce, is supporting the national authorities in Cuba to tackle the needs of people most impacted by Hurricane Ian. The Pan American Health Organization has donated more than eight tons of health supplies and medicines, which have been distributed to the most affected areas. It's also donated a kit with supplies for the health sector, including medical backpacks for health professionals serving impacted communities. And thanks to the support of the Embassy of Mexico, um, the UN team, uh, to the UN team, 20 chainsaws have recently arrived in the country to fast track the restoration of electricity and kickstart recovery by clearing access to the most impacted areas. WFP, the UN Children's Fund, the UN Development Program have also prepositioned food, water, and sanitation supplies and shelter and um, shelter emergency resources. Turning to Pakistan, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says Pakistan will need. $816 million in the coming months to help some 9.5 million people impacted by floods that hit the country. OCHA says that around 33 million people have been affected by the heavy rains and flood, including at least 7.9 million people who have been displaced, of whom 598,000 are living in relief camps. Nearly 800,000 refugees are estimated to be hosted in more than 40 districts. More than 2 million houses were impacted, with more than 767,000 houses destroyed and nearly 1.3 million houses damaged. 80, 89% um, of the damage to houses are all in Sindh province. And in Uganda, the UN team is supporting the authorities following the declaration of an Ebola outbreak two weeks ago. So far, 43 confirmed cases and nine reported deaths in five districts. Authorities are rolling out a 20.5 million dollar UN-backed response plan fo focusing on 20 high-risk districts with support from health partners, including WHO, which deployed 21 of its staff to support local response, providing Ebola prevention kits for health workers, and supporting training and deployment for nearly 900 village health teams and contact tracers. For its part, UNICEF is supporting a risk communication and community engagement, including the use of radio to enga and engaging religious leaders. Um, and we want to congratulate the former Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, uh, as today UNHCR announced that she had received the 2022 UNHCR Nansen Refugee Award. Each year, the award is given to an individual group or organization that has gone above and beyond the call of duty to protect refugees, internally displaced, and stateless people. 
Under Ms. Merkel's leadership, Germany welcomed more than 1.2 million refugees and asylum seekers in 2015 and 16 at the height of the conflict in Syria and amid deadly violence in other places. Filippo Grandi, the head of UNHCR, praised her determination to protect asylum seekers and stand up for human rights, humanitarian principles, and international law. Lastly, tomorrow, we will have a guest, and that is Kani Winya Raja, the Assistant Secretary General and head of the Asia Pacific sector for UNDP. Uh, she'll be joined by Abdallah Al Dardari, UNDP's resident representative in Afghanistan. They'll be here physically in this room to brief you on the launch of a new report in Afghanistan entitled One Year in Review Afghanistan Since 2021. Edie. Uh, thank you very much, Steph. Um, first, um, on the Pakistan appeal, the appeal has gone from $160 million to $816 million. Mm -hmm. um, how much of the $160 million did the appeal raise? Because it's now gone up seven or eight-fold. Uh, I will get that to you before the end of the briefing. We've gone quite a bit, uh, but I'll get you... Uh, I'll They'll give me that number. And secondly, on Yemen, um, has there been any renewal of fighting since uh, the truce ended on Sunday? No. Uh, thank God we have not received any reports of uh, uh, renewed uh, fighting. Um, Mr. Grunberg is continuing to engage uh, with the parties. We call on those parties to engage with him uh, constructively in his efforts. Um, and also, I think at this time, to exercise maximum restraint so we don't see any step backwards. I think every day gained uh, is a good day uh, for the Yemeni people. James? Um, I need to know whether you are going to have a North Korea statement or not, or whether you want me to hold off my questions on North Korea. Just or hold off. Let's hold off until the end of the briefing and no. Either I'll have a statement or I'll make up an answer, but just give, give us a few minutes. Okay, okay, so somebody. I, I, won't, yeah, I yeah. won't ask about North Korea. Thank if you can come back to me I when you have a statement. Always do. Um, can I just ask about um, Ukraine and the, um, uh, the annexation that the Secretary General has spoken so strongly about in the last week? Uh, there is now a General Assembly session for the mm -hmm. beginning of next week mm -hmm. um, has been announced. What is the Secretary General hoping will be the message that comes from the General Assembly. Far be it for the Secretary General to, um, um, to tell the member states what to do, but I can tell you that he has been, um, first of all, as you say, his statements were very clear. He has also very much relied on the General Assembly to provide clear guidance, um, and as he has used that as a basis for his reaffirmation, uh, for uh, the uh, defense of the territorial uh, integrity of Ukraine. Majid, and then we'll go. Thank you, Stefan. My question is about the meeting on Iraq this morning and uh, the SRSG uh, remarks about the, the Iran and Turkish attack on Iraqi territory. And she said, no neighbor should treat Iraq as its backyard. No neighbor should be allowed to routinely and with impunity violate Iraq's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yes, it's happening time and again. And she used other strong words, naming Iran and Turkey, um, and she said it's reckless acts and so on. Does the Secretary General agree with her SRSG? Yes. I mean, her, her title is Special Representative of the Secretary General, so she speaks for the Secretary General when it comes to matters uh, relating to Iraq and the mandate that she's been given. The Secretary General is full confidence in her, um, and has no issues with anything she said. And what does the United Nations and the Secretary General think should be done about these routine routine attacks, especially now stop. Iraq is... They, they should stop. Well, Iraq is calling for investigations yeah, and I mean, international uh, intervention, uh, basically. Uh, it is incumbent... Uh, the stability of Iraq uh, is important for the region, it's important for Iraq's uh, neighbors. Iraq's neighbors should work towards stabilization of Iraq as opposed to destabilize that country. Thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. I'm Natalie Lutsenko, a Ukrainian TV correspondent. Stefan, my question is uh, predictably about Ukraine. So, um, for the latest dates, we have a huge success. Ukrainian army has a huge success uh, at the front line in eastern Ukraine and south Ukraine. And it's just a matter of days, maybe weeks, that Kherson will be uh, liberated by Ukrainian forces. Is there any plan of United Nations to open a humanitarian corridor? It's obviously a lot of people will be trying to run away from the fight between them, both sides. We are... Uh I mean, since the beginning of the conflict, we've had extreme challenges, to say the least, to do uh, what we would call uh, cross-line uh, humanitarian access. As, but what we've seen happen, and which I have no doubt will continue to happen, is when uh, territory is returns to, under the authority of Ukraine, we are able to access more people. And we are working with local partners and we're lo working with, um, with the Ukrainian authorities uh, to ensure that as territory is open for us to operate in more freely, we are there because we fully understand that there are growing humanitarian needs. Uh, so we're, the, Denise Brown and her colleagues are following the situation closely and wherever we can access people, we will. But specific, specifically about Kherson, that direction, mm -hmm. do, any plans to do on the ground, I mean, for people just to run away to the rest of the We are there to support uh, the Ukrainian authorities as people reach territory that we are able to access, we will be there to support them. Desi, and then we'll move to the second. Hi, Steph. First, I, I would say I'm also waiting for any statement about the PRK and yeah. the Korean Peninsula. So my question is a follow-up on, on Ukraine, too. After the strong statement by the Secretary General, has the Secretary had to have any engagement with the Russian side on multiple issues? Because we know there's the issue of the extension of Black Sea Grain Initiative. There's the issue of Olenivka mm -hmm. fact-finding mission and also the Barisha security zone. So has the Secretary had any contact with Yeah, Russians? I mean, the, the Secretary General is often in contact with, uh, with senior Russian leaders and also, of course, uh, with Ambassador Nebenzia here. Uh, but he speaks to, he has a number of interlocutors uh, in Moscow with whom he speaks uh, on a regular basis to advance uh, all sorts of, of issues uh, for the greater, greater benefit of all. So to be clear, those issues I mentioned, they are still under discussion, right? There is a constant discussion about uh, issues related to the Black Sea Grain Initiative, to our efforts uh, uh, in facilitating increased trade in Russian uh, grain and fertilizer as well. Benno. Hi, Steph. <clears throat> I guess you're a long-standing follower of Elon Musk. And... Um, <laughs> He had some uh, ideas for peace in Ukraine, including UN-supervised elections in the illegally annexed uh, parts of Ukraine. What does the SG think about this? I, I think enough people have gotten carpal tunnel syndrome from typing on that original thread from Elon Musk. Uh, I, I, as much as I would like to dive into that uh, discourse, I will not. Um, Miriam. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. Um, two questions, one about Afghanistan, one about Iran. Um, yesterday, the central bank of the Taliban um, announced that they have received $40 million of the United Nations aid, and then they transferred it to um, private banks. At the same time, UNAMA says that these money, um, over a um, billion um, dollars, have never um, been in um, central bank, which the Taliban are controlling. Um, what do you, or basically, she thinks about that? The Taliban say they do have the control of the money somehow, but the UNAMA, and you said before that this money is not going to be in the hands of the Taliban. At the same time, um, Hazara people all over the world are asking the United Nations for I help. I mean, I, I think. Uh, I think we may have to untangle some things, and some of those questions should be answered tomorrow by our UNDP 
uh, colleagues, but it's not clear to me that the money you referred to that's been transferred to Central Bank in Kabul, where that money uh, came from. And I don't think it came from uh, the funds that we've been talking about uh, that had been uh, in the hands of the U.S. But if I would ask your patience and maybe just ask that question tomorrow uh, to my colleagues who know a lot more. Okay, thank you. Um, about Iran, a couple of days ago, Bagher Namazi was uh, let to go outside the country for treatment, and his son was um, released for a week. And um, we know that Secretary General was in touch with their um, president um, of Islamic Republic of Iran negotiating. Um, more precisely, I want to know when was that talk between um, the SG and Raisi? And, in that statement that you sent, you said you will stay engaged with Iranian government, the United Nations. Um, there has been any talks about um, suppressing the protests in Iran, any developments on the side, on United Nations side, any talks? Because you know that yesterday, um, university was uh, basically attacked by the um, regime guards and so many uh, students were arrested. I mean, as I said, the, the, the Secretary General uh, has had, uh, you know, met with the President, uh, met with the Foreign Minister when they were here in New York. He's had conversations since then uh, with uh, senior officials in Iran. Uh, he's discussed the issue of the protection of human rights in Iran. He's also discussed the issue of uh, Mr. Namazi. Um, so those contacts are, are continuing. So no talks on the Sorry. No, your microphone. No, what, what, Ever what, since the protests no, no, started what I've said in to, Iran. What, I, what I've said to you is that they have discussed the issue of protection and promotion of human rights. We've made our position uh, clear. They've also discussed other issues, other regional, uh, other regional issues. And I think as we said in the statement we, uh, uh, we issued over the weekend on Mr. Namazi, that we would continue to engage with Iran on a number of issues, including the protection and promotion of human rights. Yep. Thank you. I wanted to ask about Olenivka investigation. So uh, a few weeks ago, you already told me that the mission is uh, going to go there, but they're still not there. And I want to ask you, what is what are the obstacles right now and why they still haven't entered? The crime happened in summer. We cannot send uh, any team without ensuring that we have uh, all the security guarantees, logistical issues, but especially the security guarantees that, that we need. Uh, until that is done, we cannot send them in. So Russia does not provide security guarantees? I'm, what I'm saying is that we need green lights all over the place. Until we have green down the line, uh, we cannot send uh, people in. OK, uh, yes, Evelyn. Uh, not, I, I think I answered that question. Oh, That's okay. That's all right. That's okay. Desi? I have a follow-up uh, on Iran. Uh, I think today the U.S. President Biden uh, suggested he might put some uh, further cost, maybe sanctions, on those who are responsible for claimed uh, violence against the Iranian protesters. Will, will the U.N. support this idea? I'm not going to get into uh, into hypotheticals. We are engaging with Iran in a certain manner for a number of issues, and I won't I won't comment otherwise. Um, you can try me on North Korea, I mean, I'll Yeah. Um, so without your statement, yeah, um, uh, we've seen numerous um, um, launches by North Korea this year, but this one seems to be very significant, going over Japan. 4,500 kilometers. How shocked is the Secretary General about what has happened, and how should the international community, and in particular the Security Council, react? Okay. This is clearly uh, an escalation, uh, something that the Secretary General condemns. Uh, we will have a statement, more formal statement, uh, shortly. Um, we again reiterate the call to the authorities, uh, to the government of the DPRK, to resume dialogue with the key parties, concern, you know, with a view of achieving what we've been calling for for a long time, 
which is a complete and verifiable denuclearization of the Korean uh, Peninsula. Uh, in the question I mentioned, the Security Council, mm -hmm. talk of a Security Council meeting, how important does the Secretary General believe that the, it is that the Security Council shows unity on this issue? Extremely. Uh, Iftikhar, you have a question, and then we'll go to Abdel Hamid. Uh, thank you, Sir. Uh, my question was asked by colleague Edi. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, on on the um, on the appeal, uh, we'll circulate by email the dashboard with the appeal, which has all the numbers. Because if I start reading them out, I'm going to trip myself and fall and say something wrong. Uh, Abdel Hamid. Abdel Hamid? Okay, well, maybe he's been captured by aliens. No, no. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, yeah. shh. shh. Yes, yeah, sorry, go my ahead. Question, my question is about the situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. There is a real war going on now. Israel is attacking at every front, arresting, bulldozing, killing children. Very detainees went into their 10th day of hunger strike. Today, settlers invaded the Al-Aqsa Mosque in, uh, in Ibrahimi Mosque in Hebron. They were dancing inside the mosque. Yet the last statement I heard from Mr. Winston about the child, the seven-year-old boy who was killed, a few days ago, and he expressed his sadness only and asked for investigation. Why the SG doesn't express his concern about what's going on? It's a real war. I just came back uh, from there, and I saw things with my own eyes. So why well, there mean, is no statement from I, the Secretary? I, I think uh, Mr. Venislan delivered a long and comprehensive list of the incidents that we've seen in the occupied uh, Palestinian territory during his last briefing uh, to the Security Council. One might even say exhaustive uh, list. And so I think we have been very clear on our reporting uh, and, um, and, and the need for, uh, for that reporting to be made public. Okay. Uh, what about the Secretary General himself? The, Why he doesn't Mr. say Mr. Ven Mr. Venis Mr. Venislan, uh, speaks uh, for the Secretary General, like all of his special representative uh, do, and he has he has fully uh, has full confidence in Mr. Vanislan, who speaks on his behalf. Okay, uh, Paulina, you will speak on behalf of somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 